access control systems can go from general and very coarse things like roles to individuals or specific entities. We're gonna get as fine as it gets in this video. Hello everyone, my name is Carla and I'm a senior developer advocate at Odd Zero. I've been working as a software engineer for over 10 years and most recently with a focus on authentication and authorization, which is why today I wanted to tell you about FGA and the different implementations that are out there, like OpenFGA or Odd Zero FGA. So let's get to it. Before we jump into FGA, we need to talk about the different types of access control systems and how to use it in your applications. Access control refers to the ability to specify which users can do which actions and over which entity. In other words, who can do what. There are different forms of access control you can implement in your system, and it can be as simple as just allowing authenticated users to access your website. You can also define access control based on the roles on your organization, and that would be using role-based access control or RBAC. For example, let's say that only admins have access to a certain part of your site. You could define your authorization system based on that. Another way to control the way your users access your application could be based on something like attributes on some of your entities. For example, you could allow only users that are over 18 years of age to access certain websites or certain parts of your website. This would be a naive implementation of attribute-based access control or ABAC. Another approach could be to define access based on the relations between your users and your objects or different entities in your system. Think of any social application when you need to either follow or befriend with that user in order to look at their feed. This is known as relationship-based access control or reback. If you notice, we went from a more general approach of I'm only allowing authenticated users, so a bigger amount of users, to then only saying I'm only going to allow users older than 18 years old, so that's a smaller group of users, to then saying I'm only allowing users who are somehow related to each other. So we went from a more coarse to a more fine type of access control, and I really hope you see where I'm going to. Fine-grained authorization allows you to go as granular as possible in the way of how you define user permissions. So you can grant specific user permission to perform certain actions on specific resources in specific scenarios. And yes, I'm using the word specific a lot because I wanted to make clear how granular we're going. Well-designed FGA systems allow you to manage permissions for millions of users and objects. These permissions can change rapidly as in the system we add more objects and we need to update the permissions on some of the users. Think of a product like Google Drive, for example, where permission can be granted over a single document or a folder or for single users or a group of users. Access rights change very rapidly as new documents are being created and you need to still have control over who can see what. But what's the relation between the different access control systems and granularity? Particularly, let's focus on Reback. An application with an authorization system that is based on Reback enables user access based on the relations that that user has with a different object and that object's relationship with other objects. For example, a given user can have access to view a document if they have access to view the parent folder where that document is stored. So you have control over all the entities of your system, making it really, really granular. When you use Reback, you could also implement RBAC or even ABAC, when attributes can be expressed in the form of a relationship or a condition or a contextual tuple. For example, a user's manager, a parent folder, all of those can be defined as relationship. Fine-grained authorization relies heavily on Reback, meaning that you can have all the granularity that you need in your authorization system, whether if it's just using roles to go in more into relations between users and objects. There are different implementations of FGA, but let's talk about OpenFGA. 
OpenFGA is an open source authorization system that answers authorization checks by determining whether a relationship between a user and an object exists. And is heavily inspired by Google's internal authorization system, Sansibar. So this is pretty much how OpenFGA looks like. As you can see, this is the website and it says it's a relationship-based access control made fast, scalable, and easy to use. OpenFGA offers an API. And in the API, you see you have some entities like store, authorization models, relationship tuples, relationship queries, and whatnot. But in order to understand a little bit of what that means, I thought it would be interesting for you to see the playground. So right now I have an instance of an OpenFGA server running in my local host. And the way I got this to work is by using the OpenFGA Docker image, which I can leave the link in the comments below or the instructions or on how you can run it. So right now I don't have any information here. This is what it's called a playground. And as you can see, there are some things related to what we saw about stores, authorization model and whatnot. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new store. So I'm just going to call it test. So after creating my store, I have a dummy authorization model, which is pretty much defining some sort of like document sharing application where we have documents, folders, groups, and users. And as you can see, there are relations between the folders and the documents. Like we have a folder owner and that can be a user. We have also a document owner and that could also be a user. And then on the right side, you'll see the authorization model, but defined in a more graphic way using a graph. So whether you're better off reading it in DSL or in the graph, you can see it either way and then right here below we have what are known to be relationship tuples and if we wanted to add a tuple that's where we would define which user has which relation with which object so for example if we wanted to define a relationship tuple we can say that user Carla has the relation owner with dog planning let me make sure that i got the name right is dog and owner so we can save this and now we will have a new tuple defined here and then you can also query those tuples if you want to learn more about OpenFGA, I highly encourage you to take a look at the documentations because they have extensive guides on how to perform a check, how to update relationship tables. They have a CLI. You can also take a look into the GitHub organization and see all the different SDKs and repositories that the team is maintaining. Also, I highly encourage you to contribute if you feel like you can contribute to this project. If you want to use OpenFGA, you need to have your own OpenFGA server and maintain it yourself. Or you could also use Auth0 FGA. Auth0 FGA is built on top of OpenFGA. So that allows you to have a highly available and scalable solution that is deployed into AWS regions with active active replication. And you also have the ability to have your own private cloud if that is what your business needs. Let's take a look at how Auth0 FGA works. So this is pretty much how Out0 FGA looks like. This is what would be the dashboard. And as you can see, I have like a welcome message and then a series of steps in order for me to define a new authorization models, add authorization data, write assertions, and finally connect my application. In fact, if we go to the settings, we will see in my case, for example, I have a store name expenses. Bear in mind that the store is how you store your data. And then we have information about the store ID and the model ID. And then here we have a section called authorized clients. And this is where you would create a new client to connect with another application, for example. So let me show you the model explorer that I have right now. I have a, a, a very simple authorization system here about an employee and reports. So my user in this case would be the name F employee and I have an object called reports and we have approver, submitters and users have managers and whatnot. Similarly to OpenFGA, you'll see that on the left we have our model in DSL and then on the right we have a preview in a graph form. We could also as well add tuples in here. So for example, if I wanted to add the same tuple I added for OpenFGA, I can say that user Carla, and then I'm gonna say 
It's uh, actually, I need to say employee because that's how I named my users in this particular model. Uh, I'm going to say it's a submitter of report. I don't know, let's call it mm, planning as well. And we can add that tuple. And as you can see, we have user employee Carla report planning is the object and the relation is submitting. Then we can check the developer mode. So in the developer mode, you will have a uh, look at your model, then the tuples that you have defined and then the assertions that you can run. Right now, I don't, I don't have any, so let me create one. And then I'm gonna say, for example, that user, I am focused on the user, employee Carla is related to the report planning and the relation is approver. And then if we wanted to run this assertion, we could, for example, run it from here or run it from the query. So in this case, you can see that we have one failure. And that is because the actual relationship tuple that I have created is that Carla is a submitter of this report and not an approver. If I create another assertion saying that employee Carla and then report planning and the relation we're going to say is, um, sorry, report, it's going to say submitter. We're going to say that we're going to expect that that is true. We create that and then if we run it, that would be this one here, this should be true. As you can see, I have one pass and one fail because the second one is not true. Um, I highly recommend that you take a look into the dashboard of OutZero FGA. You can take a look at the docs as well. I'm gonna leave the link in the description, or you can also take a guided tour and learn more about the tool. What do you think is the best access control that best describes your use case? Let me know in the comments below. Also, thank you for watching.